Hey everyone, this is Nate and this is the Nader Tater channel. So today I'm going to talk about the T-Mobile home internet gateway and how to hook up your own router behind it. And there's a few reasons why you might want to do it and there's some reasons why you might not want to do it. So I'll touch on that as well as I'll talk about a little bit of how you can get a public IP address. So one of the issues with this um, gateway is that you can't get a public IP that you could type in from someplace outside your home um, to get access to your network. So um, I'll touch on that as well. So let me go through, you know, those are um, a couple questions I've gotten a lot of. The other question I've gotten about the gateway that people want me to answer in a video is hooking up external antennas. I'll tell you, I do have an order for um, multiple antennas and they are on their way so that will be coming up later so uh, make sure to subscribe and hit that bell um, to find out more videos there but um, you know for hooking up your own router this is a little cheap one I had laid in a box my my real one um, that I use is a Asus RTAC88U which is aging a little bit now um, they now have the AX88U, which is the Wi-Fi 6 capable one. And then they have ones that are, of course, better than that one. But the reason, the main reason why I started out with using my own router behind the gateway is because I have a mesh system. So I actually have five of these Asus routers that are hooked up where four of them are nodes and then I have the main router actually right here. And that's why I have coverage across about four acres of so multiple buildings down to a pond and that kind of stuff. So I knew this one wouldn't be able to do that. What I will say is this T-Mobile um, gateway, you know, it's actually a Nokia fast file, um, pretty much on the inside, but it is a Wi-Fi 6 gateway and it's actually really good as far as coverage goes. You know, it, it has, so Wi-Fi 6 is the latest uh, protocol, and uh, like you know, Asus calls it out as AX, um, and that's also another um, term for it. But um, this means it includes both the 2.4 gigahertz, um, you know, the G in really old would be like a B um, level for 2.4 gigahertz, and then there's the 5 gigahertz stuff and that might be AC, which is Wi-Fi 5, and AX is the Wi-Fi 6 stuff. So that's good. What I didn't like about it, so I, I did test it though, even because I was kind of curious. Um, I did test it when I had multiple devices. I'd bring out my tablet, I had my um, computer hooked up to it, and we'd be watching um, like streaming um, Amazon Prime or Disney or something on, on the TV. And what I found is that it doesn't do a very good job of managing multiple requests. So if I was streaming something on TV and then I told my tablet, hey, go stream something else on YouTube or um, you know, doing that and then get my phone out and tell my phone to go to a website, it doesn't do a good job of managing. Um, you, know, you can think of it kind of like a bottleneck as far as, okay, who gets the traffic? I, there's plenty of um, bandwidth available, but it had trouble um, you know, it's quality of service trying to manage that. So that's where a good router comes into play. The other benefit of having a second router, your own router hooked up to it, is I turn off the Wi-Fi on this. And some people have found that these things get hot, uh, especially if you have them in a window where they're in uh, sunlight. And then also um, they seem to have a memory leak issue it seems I haven't figured out uh, why exactly, but um, sometimes it will just bog down to a complete uh, crawl, and you have to um, re restart it or turn it off, turn it back on. Um, some people, you know, are saying like once a day or once a week or something. So by turning off the Wi-Fi, that can help with that, and then um, you need to use your own device. So it's really quite simple. For most people, you can get away with taking your um, router plugging an ethernet cable from the WAN port so you know routers typically have most of them have four LAN ports LAN ports um, they're typically yellow in color this one's actually all black but 
Um, and then the WAN port, the WAN port is typically blue, um, but it, it can vary. So you go from that port to just one of the two ethernet ports on the back of this guy. And both of these are yellow here. And it doesn't matter which one you pick. And then, so when I did that for my Asus, I get a warning that pops up that says, hey, you don't have a public um, Wi-Fi at or sorry, a public IP address. So you don't have a um, uh, an address that it recognizes as being a public facing. And that's because this gateway doesn't have a bridge mode. It doesn't have DMZ, a pass through, any of those features that are very standard, um, even in a basic um, modem router setup. Um, it doesn't have that. So. That's what I'll talk about in a little bit. There's some tricks that you can do to try to actually bypass that. But um, when, when you do that, you now have double NAT. And what NAT means is there's a limited number of IP addresses out there in the world. And you can't have a device have the same address as something else in the world. And so what NAT does is both at your home level, so with your, your router, but also on the ISP side, they will take multiple devices. So all of my devices in my home, if they're connected through a router that has DHCP, it converts all of those multiple devices, have like 50, um, give or take, and it appears as though it's one device from a public facing standpoint. So when you have this gateway and you can't turn off any of the DHCP server, any of the, the NAT stuff. As soon as you add another router, you're now adding another layer of NAT, which in by itself shouldn't cause problems. It's not until you're trying to do some more advanced routing where you're trying to do port forwarding or whatnot, that's where it can break down. So for me, I don't have an issue with the double NAT. But for some people, um, it, it might affect them, especially if they're trying to do some kind of, any kind of hosting uh, that can cause issues. But so the other thing that people have complained about with hooking up their own router behind it is some of them have their speeds drop. Specifically, I've heard most commonly the Google uh, Mesh Wi-Fi system. I've heard lots of complaints of those as they basically half the speed. So, you know, if you're getting uh, 100 megabytes per second download and 20 up, as soon as you hook in your Google Mesh system through Ethernet, you're getting 50 and 10. I don't know why um, that happens, uh, but it seems to be kind of tied to that Google um, Wi Fi mesh. The other one I've heard uh, some people complain about is um, Netgear. So, I can't really comment too much on why some of them are seeing it. It could be some setting that they have in there. Uh, you certainly want to make sure that you have your IP address that your own router is doing is a different um, uh, subnet and it's a different IP range than what this gateway does. So this gateway does 192.168.12.1 um, point and then X. So you want to make sure that your own system, like mine, is doing uh, 192.168.0.x, right? So that um, that means I won't have an IP conflict locally here in my house. To get back to what I was saying with hooking up your router, once you hook up your router uh, to that port, even though it, it, if you log in, it might tell you that you don't have a public facing Wi-Fi, your internet should work. Um, not changing anything. So that's assuming you have just the default settings on your external router and even the default settings on this guy. You can turn off Wi-Fi, like I said, um, and you can mess with settings on here. One of them that you could do is you could go to um, AP mode or access point mode and you could turn off your, or that by itself would turn off DHCP on your own router which means that this would do all of the IP assigning and routing. The problem there is I don't like the way this handles it. So I don't recommend that, um, 
but that is one way you can get away from adding another layer of NAT. Uh, but I would recommend that you have your own router, do the actual routing, run that extra level of NAT. I think it's actually, um, it, it might be even more than double NAT, depending on IPv4 versus IPv6. But so that's how you can get it to work. And for me, with my ASUS, setup including the whole mesh setup i don't see any difference in speed so if i'm connected to this guy through wi-fi directly to it or if i'm connected with my computer through ethernet to that or if i'm connected um, as i am right now with my asus system plugged in uh, my router plugged into the ethernet i get the same speed uh, regardless of that so uh, I'm not sure if those people that are having the problems of half why exactly. But now to talk about some things like, for example, I have some cameras at this house. I have several of them. Some of them are blink cameras, some of them are ring cameras, and all those work fine um, from viewing them um, from your phone or you know elsewhere outside of the the house of this network. And it's because they're they're using really a cloud based system where um, that um, camera isn't really acting as a server. It's really just sending the files to the cloud and then when you connect with your phone, it's really going through that cloud system back to here. So that's kind of like a bypass. So you don't have to have uh, port forwarding set up to, to use those. But so my other cameras, they're FOSS cams and they do need port forwarding. So in order for me to view those from outside my house, I have to have port forwarding set up on my router. With this one, since it doesn't have the pass-through, that no longer works. So the way you can get around that, if you really want to, is you can set up a service with VPN that also allows port forwarding. And so typically you would configure that, ideally at the router, the router level. So that router supports VPN setups and you, you, know, you have to check and make sure that it's compatible with uh, whatever VPN protocol service that you're using, but if they are compatible and you can use them, then that router will direct all the traffic from the house through that VPN service. And if that VPN service provides port forwarding for you, which some of them do, you know, there, there are risk to it. I mean, anytime you do port forwarding, um, you are bypassing at least some level of your um, security. And if you're doing it through a VPN, there are some additional risks to it, but um, it's probably a reasonable thing to do if you really um, need that. So that is how, so you can just search online um, for a VPN service with port forwarding and find one that works with your router. If you have a specific device that you're trying to um, access, like let's say you have a little server you want access to or something like that, then you can also do, do the same thing, but have it done instead of on the router, you can do it just on that one device, um, meaning that one device is a, is a v, VPN client, but then the rest of your devices are not. And that will help um, you know, separate out that port forwarding risk from your whole network to just that one device. So that's my quick take. The only other thing I'll say about this stuff is, you know, the T-Mobile hopefully is coming out with some improvements to this firmware to open this up. I really, really want to see a bridge mode or a pass-through mode on this gateway that would solve uh, a majority of my remaining complaints with it. Um, and then the other thing that is uh, annoying is the the CG NAT that the um, a lot of these um, mobile ISPs have and that creates a challenge and this is all because of you know the whole internet has the old addressing is ipv4 and that has like 4.3 billion addresses available but we've used those up right so we've ran out of ip addresses that are public um so they created like nine years ago this ipv6 um and that one you know, so IPv4 is like two to the 32nd power. And then IPv6 is like two to 128th power as far as how many addresses are out there. So IPv6 has 
<laughs> allied. I don't even know what the uh, the quadrillion or number um, name is for for how big of a number it is. Um, but it's a lot, so hopefully that'll last for several more decades. The problem is that it's a big transition uh, to get over to it. So with this um, services right now, they basically use this in-betweener where they're they're able to merge an IPv6 network and an IPv4. And I think all of T-Mobile now, they are IPv6 only. So the other thing that you can do if your devices support IPv6, which like, you know, phones and stuff always do, and newer computers will support that, you can try to force IPv6 protocol on them. And that has fixed some of people's problems with their T-Mobile home internet, either acting up or giving them, um, you know, uh, poor internet uh, speed or, or quality. So. That's something you can uh, you can also mess with, but um, besides that, that's a quick take of how to get your router and hook it up. And if you have any more questions, put them in the comments, and I will try to answer them. So thanks for watching.